Hey guys, welcome to the first of several lectures on the gas laws. So we're going to have a whole series of lectures on the gas laws. Um, it's a pretty encompassing chapter that talks about a lot of different uh, behaviors of gases in detail. So we're going to start off easy. This is going to be a pretty short lecture regarding the variables and units that we tend to use when dealing with gas laws. Then we'll talk about the simple gas laws, which will lead into the ideal gas law. We'll practice calculations down the road as we're doing those. And then we'll eventually get to rates of effusion, which is how quickly certain gases travel compared to one another. And those will be the main subjects that we uh, probably cover in the gas laws chapter. So let's get started on this unit. So for the gas laws, we want to talk about gas variables. So when we deal with gases, and we're talking about state of matter, so anytime you're in the state of matter that's regarded as a gas, you're going to have several different variables that can affect the behaviors of your gas. The pressure is one of the most well-known or common ones, and that is, well, pressure is defined as a force that ex is exerted over a given area. So if you're looking from the physics aspect, that's what pressure would be considered. Now we can apply this to chemistry because we can take a look at gas molecules that are going to be exerting some amount of pressure when they hit the walls of a container. So whether it's the walls of a room, a beaker, a cylinder, whatever it is, when those gas molecules hit the sides of the wall or container, they exert some amount of pressure similar to a ball that's being thrown against a wall over and over again. When the ball hits the wall, it applies a certain amount of pressure to the wall before coming and bouncing off the wall. And so for the gas laws, we tend to use a unit called atmospheres. So the unit desired is atmospheres, and we denote that as ATM or ATMs. And the standard value of an ATM is 1. So 1 ATM, when you hear the term, use the standard value for ATM. And we're going to talk about something called STP, standard temperature and pressure, in a minute. We're referring to using the value of 1 for ATM. Okay? And these are the standard values that we would use when we're considering an ideal gas. So if we move on, we can look at volume. And we're going to revisit pressure in a minute because it has a lot of varying units you need to be able to convert. But moving on for right now, let's look at volume. Um, volume is pretty easy to think about in relation to gases because gases, they spread out and they occupy the volume of a container that they're in. So whenever you have a gas, it tends not to just float around like a little cloud or bubble. It tends to diffuse and effuse sometimes if there's an opening until it equals out over the entire volume of the container which it occupies. And the volume of gas, when we report it, we usually report that in liters. So sometimes you'll see milliliters. You should be comfortable converting back and forth between milliliters and liters. And if you're not, you should go back and you should watch some of the unit conversion videos we talked about earlier. Now, the standard value for this is kind of interesting. Avogadro, the same Avogadro as Avogadro's number, um, he worked with some gas laws. He actually has his own gas law that we will discuss in a future unit. But he found out that one mole of any type of gas, helium, nitrogen, oxygen, any gas, one mole of that gas, provided it's at the standard temperature and pressure readings, has a volume of 22.4 liters. And this is going to come back into play when we calculate some constants in the ideal gas law. But you'll see how that plays in down the road. So the next one we go to is temperature, which along with pressure seems to be a pretty common one that students can guess. Um, temperature is important to the gas laws, and it certainly affects their behavior. Because as temperature increases, the gas molecules become more rapid in their movement. So in other words, their kinetic energy is increasing because kinetic energy is the energy of movement. And as those molecules start to move at a more rapid rate with more kinetic energy, that's also going to affect the pressure because they're moving quicker, so they're going to hit the wall with more pressure or more force. All right, And the temperature that we utilize when we're talking about gases is Kelvin, which we represent with a K. Now, we've talked about Kelvin briefly in some of the other lectures, 
but we've tended to stay with Celsius so far. So Kelvin is um, a unit that we're going to need to get used to when we're doing the gas variables. And the standard uh, temperature when we're talking about Kelvin is actually 273.15. And I'm going to put in parentheses here, that's zero. The zero is regarding to Celsius. So zero Celsius is the standard temperature. If you convert it to Kelvin, you would have to add 273.15. That's the way you convert Celsius to Kelvin. And the standard value for Kelvin would be 273.15, or zero degrees Celsius. And then moles, moles should also be somewhat familiar to you. You should at least know the concept of what a mole is. But in relation to gas, the moles of gas that are present in a system is going to have an influence on the gas's behavior um, because we're talking about the number of molecules that are actually present. And the more molecules that are present, we're going to have to occupy more and more volume as we put them in there. We're also going to affect the pressure as we're changing the volume back and forth. Um, and we actually, we abbreviate moles. It's still the unit is moles. But we give moles a certain value when we're talking about the gas laws, and we give it the value n. So you're going to see in some of the gas law equations in the future units uh, that we cover that n is popping up in these equations. And n is referring to the moles of gas. And one mole of gas is considered the standard value. Now, it can deviate from that. But if we're looking at standard values, you have all of them here, one ATM. 22.4 liters, 273.15 Kelvin, or zero degrees Celsius, but we're going to try to stick to Kelvin. And then moles, we're talking about the moles, is the same sort of moles that we've learned about before when we were dealing with converting grams to moles, and etc. And it's one mole is the standard accepted value when we're dealing with this. So I mentioned a minute or two ago STP. STP is standard temperature and pressure. And all that STP is is 1 atm and 0 degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin. So this is basically a recap of what was on the previous table if we look at it. But a lot of times I bring this up separately because a lot of questions they'll turn around and they'll say, okay, uh, you know, calculate the volume of this gas at STP. And you say, well, what's STP? It's standing for standard temperature and pressure. So a lot of students look at the problem. They say, well, they didn't give me a temperature or a pressure. They did. It's wrapped up and implied in the STP terminology. Standard temperature and pressure, one atmosphere, 273.15 Kelvin or zero degrees Celsius. Oh, skipped one too far. Pressure units. So I told you we would come back to this. We're going to talk about pressure units here for a second. Uh, volume, you have liters, milliliters. That's not too rough. Temperature, you have Kelvin, Celsius. Again, you're only, you only have one conversion if you're doing that. Pressure, we tend to have more than one way that we report pressure. Um, and atmospheres is the one we're shooting for. So I'm going to go through each of these and give you the standard unit. And then we'll do a very brief conversion to wrap up. So atmospheres, the typical is one atm. For millimeters of mercury, if you were to use a barometer that had mercury in it, 760 millimeters of mercury. Tor is another version of millimeters of mercury. It's named after the uh, inventor of the barometer. His last name was Tor, so they call it a Tor as the unit of pressure. And then we have Pascals, and it has one... 1,100 and 325 pascals is the standard unit for pascals. That's how many one atmosphere would have. So you can relate all of these. You can say one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is equal to 760 tor, which is equal to 101,325 pascals. So let's do a brief conversion to wrap up, and then we'll move over to the next lecture, which will start talking about some of the simple gas laws. So let's say, uh, let's pick a number. I have 797.7 millimeters of mercury, right? 
And uh, let's convert that to atmospheres and to pascals. So let's start with atmospheres. If I have 797.7 millimeters of mercury, in order to convert that to atmospheres, I would say, let's get rid of millimeters of mercury, 760 millimeters of mercury for every one atm. So I would just divide, get rid of those millimeters of mercury, I would divide through and I would get whatever my ATM is. So in this case, it would be 1.050 ATMs. So all you would have to do in your calculator, if you plug that in to check, you should take 797.7 divided by 760. So if I wanted to do it in Pascals, I would say 797.7 millimeters mercury. Again, I'm going to cancel out millimeters of mercury, so 760 millimeters of mercury. And then I would turn around and put my 1,100, 325 Pascals. Now, some students like to take the atmosphere that they got and they plug that in instead of the millimeters of mercury and they convert their atmosphere over to Pascals. That's fine. You should get the same answer when you're doing this. And the answer that you should get is 1.064 times 10 to the fifth, if we're minding significant figures, Pascals. And that's what you should get for your answer on that one. So be comfortable converting back and forth. If you have issues with converting units, including the liters, milliliters, etc., I encourage you to go back and look at a unit conversion video. Um, but other than that, that's going to wrap up the basic units. So thank you very much for watching, as usual. Please remember to subscribe so that you know when the latest videos come out. Um, and then I would appreciate it if you could like the video if it helped you, and certainly comment. You can leave any questions that you might have, as well as comments about how to better the videos or if they were helpful, etc. So thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you in the next unit.